Hey everyone, welcome back to the Board Game Spotlight. Today we're going to look at Bee Lives We Will Only Know Summer. This is for one to four players, and it plays in about 30 minutes a player, and it's from Hit Em With A Shoe. So let's take it to the table, and I'm going to tell you about it. Now in Bee Lives, you are playing as a queen bee, and you are managing your own hive. You're going to collect resources, and you're going to try to survive over the course of one year. Now we're going to join an in-progress game so that you can get a feel for how the game works. We can show you the actions, but we're not going to take a deep dive into all of the rule sets. There are a lot of nuanced rules inside the game. We want to give you a very nice overview of what you can expect from Bee Lives. At the beginning of each round, you're going to find the number of eggs that you can potentially hatch. So we have a comb size of 11 and we have four empty spaces. So that's going to allow us to potentially hatch four new bees. Then you're going to look at feeding the bees you have in your hive. Now for each two, you're going to need to pay one honey. So for five bees, we would pay three honey for them. Then we're going to hatch our brood. Now each brood costs one pollen. So we only have a pollen, so we will only hatch one new bee. After you've hatched new bees, you're then going to check to see if your hive swarms. Now your hive is gonna swarm if you ever break this number inside of the yellow circle, so six. We do not exceed six bees, so we are safe. Our hive is not going to swarm. So if we did swarm, what would happen is if we, we immediately lose half of the bees. Then we're going to be forced with a decision. Do we want to stay with our hive or do we want to leave with the new hive? So we would choose a wild hive and we would place it within three tiles of our current hive location. So we would place, we could place this here. The strength of this hive is going to be equal to the number of bees that left us. So we would move it up to level three. We then have the option of leaving. If we leave, we reduce our comb size back to 10. We lose all of our resources. Our disease track goes all the way back to zero and we keep our new queen, but we pause brooding. We will not be able to hatch new bees during the next round. For each two honey that is removed in this process, your comb size is going to go up one in the new hive. Now, if we chose to stay, instead we would requeen. What that means is we're going to have to choose a new queen from the potential queens. Our disease track would be decreased by half and then we're gonna move on. So let's talk about what happens next. After you check to see if your hive swarms, and again, that's equal to exceeding the number in yellow, you're then going to reveal a new event. So we are in the spring, so we will re reveal a new spring event, and bloom tiles are going to provide an additional honey. Now, in each of the seasons, spring, summer, and fall, each of these resource tiles are going to provide a different number of resources when you forage them. And we've got this really neat handy dandy card that tells us exactly what resources we gain from harvesting those tiles. So bloom tiles are going to give us an additional honey during this round. You have wet tiles, wilt tiles, and harvest tiles as well. After checking the event for this next round, it's going to go to the action selection and worker placement in the game. Now this is where most of the action happens inside of Bee Lives. This is where we get to use our bees to take a number of different actions until all players have used all of their available workers. So let's talk about what you can do. One of the first actions you can take is to forage. Foraging is when you get to place a bee on a tile and gain those resources. Now, you can forage one to three spaces away from your hive, and depending on how far you go, it costs that many bees. So it would cost one to go here, two to go here, and three to go three spaces away. So we will forage on this bloom tile, which is going to give us six honey during that action because of that event that was played. The next action you can take is to scout. Now when scouting, you're going to choose a location three tiles away from your current hive, and then you're going to draw two new tiles from the bag, and you're going to choose one of those to place. So we could place this wet tile in that location, and we have now expanded the map inside of the game. 
When you requeen your hive, there are four different types of queens that you can choose from. You can choose an aggressive type queen, which is going to allow your hive to perform better in raids. You can choose a hygienic queen, which is going to allow you to keep your hive cleaner from disease. You have a prolific queen, which is going to allow you to gain more bees during the hatching. Or you can choose a nomadic bee, which is going to swarm more often. And instead of the left value, you're gonna go with the right value for exceeding your number of bees in your hive. Another action you can take is to cool your hive. When you cool your hive, you're going to spend water for every five bees, it's going to cool off your hive. Now this is important when overheating is in effect. And overheating happens typically in the summer more often. So when overheating is in effect during the round, you'll need to cool off your hive using water you've gained from wet tiles. Now, before we talk about defending your hive, let's talk about raiding and robbing from other hives. When you raid from another hive, you're attempting to gain honey from that hive, and you're also trying to score victory points. So depending on the number of bees that you send to raid another hive, you're gonna roll a number of D4, and then you're gonna add up values you're, you'll have to decide if you're gonna re-roll, you can sacrifice bees, you're gonna gain honey based on the number that you have, and if you're successful, if the number of bees outnumber your opponents, then you're going to be successful, you'll gain two victory points for that raid. Now, the defend action, if a player has any bees on the defend action, it's gonna make it much harder for your opponents or even wild hives to successfully raid against you. So defending yourself can be very, very strategic if you have a player at the table or if you have a lot of wild hives that are going to attempt to raid your hive. Another action you can take is to clean your hive. So when you send bees to clean, for each bee you send, you're gonna to get to move your Varroa mite back one on this disease track. Now the disease track is really important because during the brooding and hatching of new bees, you're gonna lose a number of bees depending on how far this mite is. During winter, wherever your disease mite is located, you're going to lose that many bees during each winter month. So it's very important that you spend the time to clean your hive and ensure that your bees are going to survive. Another action you have is to build wax. This is the way that you unlock more areas inside of your comb. So for each bee that you send to build wax, you're going to spend two honey, and that's going to move your level one step. So if we were to send three bees to build wax and we paid six total honey, we would have moved our level three steps. So now it's going to give us a larger comb. We can have more bees inside of our nest and it's going to allow us to hold more resources so that we can survive the winter. Now, after each player takes an action, if there are any wild hives on the board, that's when they're going to activate. So for each wild hive that's on the board, they're gonna activate their neutral worker tokens. Uh, there are wild hive actions for each of the seasons. So during the spring, which is where we're currently located, the wild hives are dormant, but they're going to activate during the summer and they'll be active during the fall. So depending on the action that they need to take, they're gonna go down this list and perform the first action that they can take. So if overheating is in effect, they're gonna forage for water, then if that if they don't, if overheating is not in effect, then they're gonna just gonna rob the closest hive. Or if that's not possible, they'll forage. So they're gonna take a number of actions and they each have five neutral tokens. So after each player takes an action, the wild hive is gonna activate. So they're gonna cause chaos. They're going to potentially block the players from foraging from different tiles. They'll be attacking you, which is when you need to defend your hive. And so they add a lot of player interaction into the game. After each player has finished placing all of their bees, you're gonna go into the cleanup and then the upkeep of the next round. So you're gonna move the first player token to the left. You're gonna return all of your bees into your hive. You're gonna return all of the wild hive tokens back. After you finished your cleanup phase, you're then going to go into the next upkeep for the new month. Now there's one thing that's gonna happen at the end of the spring. So once you've moved past spring, 
What happens is you're going to join the worlds or the tiles that each player has created. So depending on who's the first player, they're going to get to choose in which orientation this joins these tiles. So they could come and move like this. As long as one side matches, they can create a, a larger world. They are joining their little hives together to create one large map. And that happens after spring. So then you're going to go into the final six rounds of the game with a larger map. And now I have access to their tiles. They might have access to mine. And so there's just, it adds more player interaction into the game. Now the game is over after you play nine productive months. So you're going to play out nine months in which you're able to take actions, build your combs, collect resources, make sure your bees survive. So there are three months in which you want to keep as many bees alive as possible. Now we talked about earlier where your disease track is located. Depending on where that is, that many number of bees are going to die in each winter month. And remember that's three months. Then you're going to have to pay one honey for every three bees after three winter months, after you have spent all of your honey or bees may have died from starvation or disease, the player who has the most victory points is going to be declared the winner. Players are gonna score victory points for each surviving bee, for each remaining honey, and then they're gonna score victory points for any victory points they had when they swarmed throughout the three seasons of spring, summer, and fall. There are multiple different variants. You can play a multi-year variant where you play over the course of a number uh, two or three years. There is a solitaire mode where you can play against the wild hives and you're trying to score as many victory points and you're trying to survive. If Bee Lives looks like a game that's for you, if you wanna know more about Bee Lives, take a look at the description below for a link to the Kickstarter campaign. This has been Derek with the Board Game Spotlight. And this has been your preview of Bee Lives, We Will Only Know Summer.